Well, I think you're trying to sabotage your new relationship. I am. He deserves someone who isn't so mentally unstable. What is it that's making you push? A fear, fear of rejection. Is there somebody else? What did I do? I apologize to you first and foremost. If he makes you happy, then what are we Move even talking about? Move him in. Listen, when I tell you when I came over here, the vibe has been so weird. I feel like my mom is disappointed in me. It all oh, but flip. but I got straight A's on my report card. But she's still disappointed in me. But but that's just because we got things to discuss. We do. Uh, but before that, welcome everybody to the Tiff and Flip Show. I'm Tiffany Jenkins. And I'm so proud of you. That's the first time you did an opening, just normal voice. That was great. I enjoyed that thoroughly. And I'm Flip Adam. On this podcast, we discuss everything from parenting, addiction, recovery, even spaghetti squash. Ew, dude. I love spaghetti squash. I hate spaghetti squash. I... It's just because it hasn't been prepared correctly. No. Do you I... like spaghetti? Yes. Do you like squash? No. So, that's a big factor. In my I love squash. I worked at Ruby Tuesday, and that was like one of our featured sides. See, we did it at Bonefish, and like theirs was like top notch. Mm. It's like the best of both worlds, although I hate prepping it. Nightmare. Yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. It's disgusting. But how cool is that? It's it was, not. Yeah, vegetables are so cool. Ew. They are. They aren't. Vegetables are dumb and stupid. It's not what your cheesy gordita crunch says. <laughs> Um, so Flip and I, this is one of those episodes where I'm like, let's not talk ahead of time just so we could talk on the podcast because <clears throat> I've got some things going on and I thought we could process them together as a family like we used to do. I love that. For us. For us. All of us. Yes. Um, first, I would like to do a little catch up. We need that. Congratulations. Thank you so much. On eight years. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh. Super, super amazing. Drug and alcohol free. Yep. That's a really big deal. Big deal. If you know Flip, it was a big deal. He was massive. He was bad. So I'm just kidding. I don't know. I've just heard no, stories. I was. I was. Yeah. So you're you're a walking miracle. That's incredible. You should be really proud of yourself. I am. Good. Yeah. Um I am trying to sabotage my new relationship. Yeah, you are. Okay. How do you know? Uh, do you want me to answer that? Is a snitch. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Well, we were supposed to record last night. Oh, yeah. We were supposed to record last night, and I wasn't feeling it. I, and every time we've tried to record on a night when I wasn't feeling it, we haven't aired it. So, about that. You said, uh, hey, I don't want to record tonight. I'm not feeling it. And I said, okay, is everything all right? And you said, yeah, I'm just not in the right headspace, which is new territory for us. Because normally, you're like, no, my world's falling apart. And you unleash it all. And you just, you didn't. So I didn't dig any deeper. I just figured you were having an off day. Boy, was I wrong. You weren't wrong. What do you think you know? Well, I think you're trying to sabotage your new relationship. I am. Yeah. And I'm not trying to. No, you're doing it. You're doing actually a pretty good job at it. Rude. But true. <laughs> Uh, listen, did, what did, can you tell me what Sierra told you? Ooh, see, you're, um, okay. No, this is honestly what she told me. She said that you're trying to sabotage your relationship <laughs> and he's coming with the correct responses and you're just like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> and <laughs> what is it that's making you push? A fear, fear of rejection? Yeah, but has he rejected you? No. Has he even made you feel I like? told him the other day, I said, I feel like you're getting too close to me. Uh. And if you get too close, then you'll see everything. And if you see everything, then you're not going to want to be with me. I also reference back to my earlier statement about he snuggled you with a CPAP. That's not what I mean, butthole. That's yeah. all surface stuff and I, that I'm so grateful for. I never thought anybody would like me again because of my CPAP. I really didn't. 
Yeah, but you've you've known this dude for a long time. He's, yeah, he's seen, but he has not known me, known me on such an intimate level. I think he's formed an idea in his head of what it would be like to be with me, and you know what kind of partner I would be. But now he's getting closer to me, and it's a fear of mine to let people close to me because generally. I don't know. I'm used to people leaving and not fighting to stay in my life. Um, and so I assume probably makes an ass out of you and me. Oh my God. There's a second person to say that to me today. So I assume that at some point, like, I don't know, I'm assuming cause it's really easy for people to leave me and just not talk to me again that they're like, she's not as great as I thought she was, bye. And so I, if I can keep him from getting close enough to feel that, then I can be safe. Isn't it interesting that that's a fear of yours, but that's what you try to do to people? What? Leave and get them out of your life. Isn't that interesting? Don't. 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 Isn't that? I just thought that was an interesting statement. Don't do the shoulder eyebrow thing. I, I'm a runner, dude. Oh, you're a runner who doesn't like runners. Yeah, they're two separate things. I will leave before I get left. Yeah, no. Yes, but that's not a... I'm not leaving him, by the way. He, look, can I just say, he's one of the greatest human beings that I've ever known. And if he did decide to leave me, I would be shattered. And every person I would date after him would have to at least reach the bar that he's at in order for me to be any kind of satisfied in any way. Um, the last thing that I want is to end things, but it's like, he's so good that I feel like I'm not worthy of his goodness. Like he's so good. He's such a great person. And I feel like I'm not saying he's too good for me, but I do feel like, he deserves someone who isn't so mentally unstable. <laughs> yeah, but those are things that I think if you're aware of and if you're willing to work on it. Now, if you just like accepted it, that just like, eh, listen, I'm a broken human. I'm not going to do anything about it. Deal with it. That's a different story. But I know that you don't like being like that. And I believe that you're willing to put in the work to kind of figure out out why it is that um, you think the way you do. And you went a little cuckoo. And he was like, yo, I'm not going anywhere. And so, like, that's action, right? And the fact that he's still around, <laughs> right? Don't, don't make a face like you're shocked that he's still around. Well, no, but I'm just, I'm just saying, right, if I am newly dating somebody... And they have something that I told you what my thought process would be. My thought process is no, this isn't it. There's something else. And now my guards up. Now you're going to have to, now you're going to have to prove yourself because now my guards up. Now I put my wall up. Really? 1000%. That is the most, I don't want to say the most ridiculous thing, right? Because I understand the thought process and the insecurity. I do understand that. But I am telling you that if I was in a new relationship with all of the variables that we've already mentioned and something like that happens and I'm like, yo, we'll figure it out. I'm not going anywhere. And you're like, okay, um, I understand you say you're not going anywhere, but you're getting out of here. I'm Okay, and my mind's going like, is there somebody else? What did I do? Mm. I must not be worth it. And to shield myself from getting hurt, I'm now putting up a wall. Hmm. And I'm being cold and distant, and I'm leaving you on red. Okay, that makes sense. Not that he's done that, because he's been great today. But I've been overthinking everything now. Yeah. Every single text message I've been reading into it. Yeah. You're so... You're so bad at that. <laughs> you were so bad at that. 
<laughs> Excuse me. You could text me at three o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I got this great idea for a podcast. And I respond, okay. And you're like, never mind. <laughs> I was I was stupid anyway. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> and it's like, what do you, you, you overanalyze. And, and that's the one thing I hate about text messages <sighs> so much is because you can never tell somebody's tone. Mm-hmm. I have such a huge fear of rejection. Yeah. Okay. And we've so here so here's my thing. We've established the problem. Fear of rejection. Mhm. Right? So we know the problem. How do we fix it? I don't know. Well, that's what we got to figure out. Time machine. No. Childhood. Nope. No. No. Because if we can find a way to be not rejected, or at least be able to feel it less, right? Mm -hmm. Because I struggled with insecurity so much as a kid from getting picked on and, yeah. and all of that, that it took a lot of work. I, I've told you before, when I used to walk through crowds of people, I used to look at the ground. Yeah, you did tell me that. Now I hold my head up. Does that mean I'm never insecure? No, that's not what that means. But I have found a way to accept what I consider my flaws, enjoy what I consider my strengths, and a majority of the time be okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's in our human nature to, from time to time, feel rejected or not really be crazy about ourselves. It's human nature to, to feel things good, bad, and different. That's not the, the, the goal is to never feel this way right but how cool would it be to do do work on yourself and then if a situation like this arises again instead of immediately trying to push them away say you know what this i'm feeling this and like my immediate reaction is i want to push you away mm -hmm. and i want to run and hide and then maybe through that conversation you may not feel 100 percent better but you might be like okay we can we can figure this out mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I do. I, I do. And I, I think I am really honest, like when I'm feeling things, like uh, trying to figure out where they're stemming from. And I, I'm communicative. Somebody in the comment section just said it's also a fear of abandonment. Hell yes. Yeah. Like that might be it more than rejection, honestly. Yeah, but that's what doesn't make sense to me is because you're trying to push somebody away and they're standing in front of your fate, literally holding your face. Because if I can control it, it won't hurt as bad if it ha as if it happens to me later. Yeah, but do you think that you would get involved with somebody that would hold your face and say, I'm not going anywhere, and the minute you turn your head, they're out the door? It's happened to me. I'm not, I'm not talking about what's happened i'm talking about would you be with a person today in your life around your kids in your bubble let somebody into your heart that you feel would do that because if so then that's a whole nother question damn because i don't think you would damn flip i don't think you would and i don't think that he is that type of guy because again what you have to look at is the actions because if you're like and hey, listen this is going on i think i need to push you away and they were like okay and they just left then you're like okay yeah thank you you answered every question yeah now i know yeah but if you have somebody i just think it's i i don't think that it's getting thought through when somebody's like no i am f here fighting with you for you to say nah, you're gonna leave that that makes that makes no sense to me and i know it makes no sense to you and sometimes feelings don't necessarily make sense that's why they say feelings aren't facts right mm -hmm. but you're so good at communication this just surprises me this surprises me does it really yeah because you're so and you like love to get to the bottom of things and like i can't even text you like hey i need to talk to you later hmm. yeah that's like, torture yes no you're finding out right now what's going on and so if you're like that i just it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me and there's something else yes it's the fear of rejection yes it's the fear of abandonment 
we understand and we've established that's the problem. How do we fix it? And that's what we I have need to therapy, figure out. therapy, probably. Okay. And I think you need to do a lot of self-reflection. And I think what is, what is the purpose of therapy, right? You talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to talk about it with those closest to you. Your wife came over yesterday. Yeah, I know. I didn't get the call. I know, because it, it was a girl thing. I understand, but that has not stopped you from sharing things and feelings. And you even to get a, a, a guy's perspective. Yeah. Right? You don't have to be... Uh... Do you know what I think it is? Hmm. Maybe. What? Maybe I think by calling another guy to talk about my relationship would feel like a betrayal. Uh, yeah, but not, I, I think that this is a very different situation. Do you? Yeah. If it was a dude, if it was pissed, a, if he called a girl to like talk about, if he called a girl that was married to your best friend that he had a podcast with. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that's why. So maybe I'll explore that also a little bit too, because I, I don't want anything with our friendship to change, but also I wonder if subconsciously I'm worried about things that don't exist. Well, subconsciously, and and I am not saying this from a place of, of um, anger or frustration or anything like that. This is just me speaking the truth. It already has changed a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? And I think that subconsciously because maybe because of insecurities, you wouldn't want him talking to another girl, right? That you and I used to talk almost every single day, mm-hmm. right? This is a new relationship. I understand how those things go. They're exciting. You want to spend every minute with them. You're like, oh my God, the way you eat that Cheeto is so amazing, mm-hmm. right? Like all of those things, I understand all of that. But I also think that throughout going through the divorce, processing all of those emotions, things like that, I would like to think that I have been somewhat of a consistent person Mm -hmm. that's been there. And so to then completely, I don't, I shouldn't say completely, then to abandon that a majority of the time. Again, this is a conversation. Mm. Hey, Flip's a really good friend of mine. I think that I have insecurities about talking to him because I wouldn't feel comfortable with you talking to another girl about your feelings, this and that, which is just so strange to me because you're so good at communicating. But it's different when you're in it. Yeah, I get really up when I'm in relationships I'm really like codependent and messed up and and I know I apologize to you first and foremost well I mean I appreciate that but you don't have to well you don't I want to I wouldn't want to feel like you were choosing somebody over me suddenly your new thing like I wouldn't want to feel that way yeah no I get that but like I under I understand it you know what I mean and like I still do get to talk to you from time to time and we still get to do this and we get to do all kinds of uh, fun things and things with the kids and stuff like that. So um, it's not all that, but I think that this thing that we call life is a amazing, miraculous, treacherous uh, roller coaster, right? And I think that it is very rare to find people that love you for you Mm -hmm. and don't expect anything in return. And I think that we have to cherish those. Mm -hmm. Right. And I even look at situations in, in my life with friends that like, I just stop talking to. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's shitty. It's shitty. Because you experience things in life and people 
are in the trenches with you and they go through things. Yeah. Like you've been through some some things with with me and I've been through some things with you. I wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for you. Well, I mean, you would have. No, I wouldn't have. You, If it wasn't for you after my divorce, I truly don't think I would be here even in a relationship. So the fact that now, you know, I don't need you on standby as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Which is good. It, it, it's a good thing. It is good. But also, I don't want it to leave you feeling like I don't need you anymore because I still really do want, not just need you, but like as a friend, want you in my life. And mm -hmm. I want you to be a regular part of my life uh, who I talk to regularly just like before. So while it isn't like life or death, mm -hmm. stand by, help me fucking sort these feelings out because I don't know what to do with them type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I could still call and check in and just be like, what's up? Yeah. And yeah. I will make an and, effort to do that. And I totally didn't mean to to spin this around, but since no. we're talking about me. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is, this is how, this is a communication thing. Yeah. And so my thing is I know you don't love to be in your head, but you get lost in your head sometimes. And I know that can be a very dangerous place for you to be. And sometimes you just need a soundboard, right? Mm -hmm. And you're trying to navigate a new relationship. And while I love my wife and she has great advice, she's not a dude. Mm -hmm. Because I doubt she brought up, what do you think he's feeling with you pushing away? And uh, no, I, I know she did. Mm -hmm. She did bring up that he was saying all the right things. But from a guy's perspective, listen, there's this common misconception that guys can't feel rejected or feel less than or not be not feel wanted or not feel sexy, you know, but that's not the case. And I even though I don't know him, I know him enough to say that I feel like he's more emotionally intelligent than most. And so I guarantee whether he admits it or not. Those feelings of being less than, not being worthy, what's really going on behind the scenes have probably creeped into his head. Mm. And that's not what your goal was. Right. But now you've planted that seed. What do I do? I mean, you have to talk. The best thing that ever happened in my relationship with my wife was when I screwed up in the beginning because it changed everything. Yeah. Just... It started an open dialogue that I didn't think was possible with the opposite sex. Right. I did not think it was a possible to look at my significant other and say, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling a little insecure about this and I know it's silly, but like, I just need to talk to you about it and not have them tell me that I'm stupid or that I'm crazy or flip it around on me, but to say, okay, you know that's not the case, and but I do see where you're coming from, and your feelings are valid. Right. So how do we fix it? And like that has been the, even though I wish I could take it back, if I took it back, I don't know if I'd be where I am today. Interesting. So maybe I needed to have an awkward little breakdown to get closer than ever. To get clarity. But, but, but really like, then you do this thing where you like to make things weird. <laughs> you can't do that. You what? cannot do that. What do you mean? <laughs> Golly. What do you mean? You just have this just knack for like taking a situation where things get a little rocky and then everything comes back and it's smooth and then you just love making it so awkward. I don't know if I love doing that. As it's much what as you, okay, you're good at it. Yeah, you're really good it's at it. It's accidental. <laughs> but but then again, you need to communicate that. So hey, I do this thing that when I'm embarrassed and I've made an ass out of myself, huh. and then things come back together, I like to make things awkward. So things are probably gonna be a little weird here for the next day or two. Damn. All right. Okay. I think you just need to communicate more because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. I feel like him and I are great at communicating, except for when I get in shutdown mode, then I'm completely irrational. I was like, I can't do this. I'm really sorry. 
<laughs> he's like, do what? I'm like, you don't want this. Mm. You don't want these problems. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, but I'm doing you a favor. Just trust me on this. You don't want this and i'm sorry for wasting your time <laughs> and like i was so serious and he's like hey look at me and i couldn't i couldn't make eye contact i had to look everywhere else and he's like hey i'm not going anywhere and i'm like you are <laughs> you will give it time just give it time you're gonna and and he was just so great and he did everything perfectly and i felt irrational and awkward. And I don't know how to get out of it. There needs to be like a phrase or a word or something that when you're getting irrational, you can say like, hey, I'm having one of those moments. And then that way, maybe something like that clicks you back to reality, right? Yeah. Or maybe he knows like, okay, when that happens, I'm going to give her some space you for know, a little bit. You know what he did? What? Well, when I said that, I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, ah, I, I think I need space. He's like, are you running? Oh, God, what a legend. I, I, I was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not running. I'm, I just, um, uh, Oh, God, I know it. I have it. What? I have it. What? Next time you do that, we get him, hear me out, Olympic style tracksuit. Okay? So then next time you do that, he doesn't say anything. He just goes in the other room, puts on the singlet. Don't. You know what I mean? Call it that. That's what it is. Leans over, ties his shoes real tight, and then gets in the running pose. And then you can see how ridiculous you're being. Because my, you got my man in a singlet. That seems elaborate. But I also know that when you are having a moment, one of the surefire ways to snap you out of it is laughter. And so maybe that's just the thing, which, I mean, it is a bit extreme, but. Dog life. He, was, he did. He was trying to make me laugh, too. He was he handled it so beautifully. Yeah, like a like a real Which only gentleman. solidified that he's too good for me and he needs to run while he can. That's so silly. That's what my mind told me. That's so silly. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Thanks. Mm, ah. That's tough. That's a that's a, a shit spot to be in. Do you have you never felt that way? Like you want to relieve somebody of the burden? Oh god, all the time. Ah, no, I shouldn't say all the time. A lot when I was younger. Like when I was in active addiction, because for some reason, like I was in relationships when I was in active addiction with like normal people. Yeah, that's weird. And so like a lot of times, like I wanted to, but then I was like, you know. I just got to make it like toxic when it doesn't have to be. Well, yeah. And I think that the codependency is something that has to get addressed because you, again, you go all in. Yes. You go all in. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. that you still need some you time and not you time when you're recording a podcast. Yeah. I think you need you time and that's hard. And I think he needs me time. Yeah. Which you won't do, but I think that it's important. It is hard because you just want to be around him all the time. Yeah. But again, if you're, if you're not taking the time to work on yourself and then you're getting that validation from that other person. That's what he said. He said he's worried. He doesn't want to be the, he said. Source of your happiness. Yeah. He said yeah. that yesterday. And then I was like, ah, you're not. I'm, I am my own. So I can make my, I don't even need you. Like. When's the last time you painted? And then I just took it too far the other way. Yeah. And I didn't mean any of it because I do need it. Yeah. And he is the source of my happiness. But yeah. I wanted to seem like an independent bad bitch. Yeah, but a lot of times, just so you know, when you do things like that, you look so ridiculous <laughs> doing it because you're so not smooth with that kind of stuff that, like, I'm sure he read right through it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. When's the last time you painted? I haven't painted in a really long time. When's the last time you wrote? The other day a little bit. I'm not talking about a grocery list. 
Oh. Um. Yeah, no, I ha- I'm working on my second book. When's the last time you had a dance party? Oh, we have dance parties every day. Okay. Well, you need to to continue to do the things that make you happy. I know painting makes you happy. It brings you peace. It, it centers you. I know, but I've been so busy. Stop. I have been. Stop. I've been very busy. Yes, hanging out with your source of happiness. No, fuck. And that doesn't mean that, like, if he's here, you can't say, hey, listen. We do. Separate stuff. I'm going to paint. Yeah. I'm not talking about like going to the bathroom. But I feel like if I have time to paint, I should be writing or I should be making videos or I should be editing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. Excuse me. We're talking about things that have to do with being adults and it makes me on. That makes sense. Painting is a, I would love to paint again. Yeah. You're good at it. Thanks. And it brings you, uh, I think, a, a certain level of calmness. It soothes your soul. It's an escape, though. Yeah. So, people need that. People need that that escape. We sought it through drugs and alcohol for a majority of our lives. Yeah. Now we don't have the drugs and alcohol. Now your escape is another human being. Not healthy. Whoa. For real? Uh, like, wait, 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 wait. Yes, because when you're with him, you don't have to feel your feelings. You don't have to. It, it makes everything better. It does make everything better. Yes, so you're using that as an escape. But the problem is, is that when you get in one of your moods, your bipolar Betty moods, okay? Your depressed Debbie moods. Okay. Go on. You're running Rhonda moods. Okay. <laughs> then that person can't provide that for you because now you're trying to push him away. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? Say you can't come over even though I want to see you so bad? Say I really want to see you. I have to focus on myself tonight. Because again, actions are going to tell yeah, you everything. Yeah, but then I'm just going to spend the whole night just thinking about Action- them. Actions are going to tell you everything. If he's supportive then okay. You know, one of the, um, I always sucked at boundaries like you, you're terrible at them. Um, and when I got into the relationship with my now wife, Sierra, I told her in the beginning, like, listen, like I have to focus on my recovery and my recovery has to come first and my recovery can't look like your recovery. And what I need you to understand is like, if we have plans to go to dinner and my ass is on fire and I need to go to a meeting, the first time I say I need to go to a meeting and you make me feel bad about it, I'm out. Mm, yeah, I remember you telling me that. And any time I have said in the eight years, hey, I need to go to a meeting, never once, never once has she been like, eh, I don't think you should. Or, no, why don't you just stay in tonight? Why don't you just stay with me tonight? Why don't we just go to dinner? Never once. That's my bow. It's always, okay. I got the kids. Don't worry about it. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so I think that he is a, a reasonable guy. And I think that he would understand that. But again, it can't just come out of the blue. It has to be a conversation. Well, we, we do have conversations about like, hey, eventually we're going to have to start getting into a routine and get, you know, quit this honeymoon stuff because we have to get back to focusing on life. Yeah, but it's a lot of words and not actions. Yeah, because we don't want, I don't want to. I understand, but if he makes you happy and you want to be with him and he wants to be with you and you see longevity here, mm-hmm. then what are we Move even talking him about? No. Mary. No. No. Sacrifice. Have his babies. I'm sorry. I'm listening. Sacrifice the interim, the dopamine hit you're going to get from seeing him and spend some time on yourself. Spend some time writing. Spend some time painting. That's smart. It's smart. You're not going to do it, but it's smart. Yes, I am. No, I'm I'm telling. I'm telling. I know that. I'm telling. Who? You know who. Who are you telling what? Him. You're going to tell him. I'm telling on you. 
Yep. Tell, what are you going to tell him? I'm telling him. He won't listen to you. I disagree. What are you going to tell him? Stay away from her? Nope. Nope. Don't come over. She needs to work on herself. Nope. She's codependent and she's crazy. You should leave. Why would I say You're that? leaving me to fill in the blanks, Flip. You can't well, do that. You're good at communicating. You need to communicate your thoughts, feelings, and if you're too weak to say, I don't want to hang out with you today because I need to focus on myself, then you need to tell him. I don't feel like I want to do that, though. It's not about being weak. It's it's not a... B if there was a night that I wanted to focus on myself, I'd have no problem. I disagree. I disagree with you disagreeing. Never. That day's never going to come. Because I don't ever want to. I know, but you need to. Life isn't necessarily about what we want. Sometimes it's about what we need. And you need to continue to work on yourself. And you need to continue to heal. Yeah. And you need to find some sort of dopamine hit outside of his pee pee. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Flip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Cut we down. don't even. Cut down. I'm, cut down. We're virgins. Cut down. Cut down. Outside of his attention. And you know I'm right. And they know I'm right. Boy, this was a great episode. I enjoyed this. Yeah. This was fantastic. Me I feel too. great. How I'm do you feel? So glad that you feel great. I feel great. <laughs> oh, the best episode ever. Flip, you are on it today. Says one viewer. <laughs> Tiffany, you're so beautiful. Do whatever you want, bitch. Live your best life. That's weird. I don't F that guy that. who's I don't, saying I don't, words. I don't, I don't see that <laughs> anywhere. Listen, and this is this is something that I used to tell the guys in rehab when I go and speak, right? And what I would tell them is if you have to sacrifice the interim for the rest of your life. Every single one of you would sign on the dotted line, no questions, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I'm not telling you don't hang out with him for weeks at a time, but I think it would be healthy for you to take a day where you go get a massage and maybe go see a movie by yourself or maybe sit here and paint or write. It's not going to cause harm to the relationship. And if you need to do those things in order to have a better relationship and he doesn't understand that, then that tells you everything that you need to know, even though you suck at red flags. Excuse me? You're the worst. You Don't you dare. First of Listen, all. A guy could be painted red, wearing a red shirt, red pants, red shoes, holding a red flag, and he could say, hey, I'm toxic. And you'd be like, oh. That you're dreamy. You are such a liar. You like to ignore red flags because you're constantly searching for that escape. Uh, the old me, mm. the new me, doesn't love red flags. You just like to run when you have red. When there's a lack of red flags, then I run. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't see any red flags, then you're like, then there I must panic. be red flags. Yeah, and I'm going to get the fuck out of here before I find them. Well, I'm excited for you because at least you've brought all this stuff to the light. I know. And there's something that is very freeing about it. Getting all of it out there. So now we've got it all out there. It's all on the table. We had to bring in another table to put all the stuff. So now, and I say we, but really it's an inside job. You have to figure out how to navigate it. And I'm excited for you. I appreciate all of your advice and your wisdom and your male perspective. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't like who I am when I'm in those shut down. I could turn my emotions off like that. Yeah, that's not. Good. That's not healthy. It has protected me thus far. From what? Danger. Pain. Has it? 
I fucking can't stand you. I can't stand you. It hasn't worked. So the slow glance. Let's let's try something to see if it works and it may not work but then if that doesn't work okay we know shutting off the emotions doesn't work we know this doesn't work then we try something else we're just knocking things off off the list right it's my best friend it's my friend did i tell you what i told her the other day I came over and she said, mom, your friend's here. I said, why can't we be friends? <laughs> I said, you're my friend. <laughs> that's you my friend. Tell me that's funny. Yeah. I'm sorry for making this whole episode about me. Uh, no, I turned it and made it about me a little bit. Not really. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you are a good friend. This is like the old episodes where I was I know. at the end of my rope and you were talking me off the ledge. Yeah. And sometimes you need that. Yeah. You know? I don't know if this episode's going to... Make it. Ep- well, no. Oh. I don't know. I gotta. I want to talk to him out of respect. And and then here's the, the crappy part. I wanted to edit this episode. I want you to. Okay. So then why don't you talk to him? I will tonight. If, if he's cool with it, then I'll edit. And then you can go in and take anything out that yeah. you, don't, you don't like. But it's good. And I'm excited for you. And this doesn't have to be a bad thing. I think it's... An encouraging thing. Yeah. Because now we understand. I yeah. Which is so ironic that you like to run because boy, don't you like to not do physical. You're making a fat joke. Things. <laughs> Perfect. No. Perfect. No. Not, not a fat I'm joke. I'm a sediment. Not Sedentary. Not, not a fat joke. Just a, I'm a bump on a log. Don't like moving. I don't much. like moving. Unless it's to move away from emotions, then you could call me Usain Bolt, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I was thinking the Jamaican tracksuit for him. Okay, yeah, we'll think about it. We'll talk about it. But either way, singlet. you're a really good friend. I appreciate you. You all are really good friends. And thanks for hanging out. I would love to be like, I'm not crazy, guys, I promise. But I am, so I'm not sorry. And uh, join us next week. I'll have an update on my mental well-being, and I'll let you know if he dumps me or not. And um, we're joined by special guest Steve Harvey next week. No, I don't get it. Steve Harvey. Yeah, no, I know who he is. I don't. Is he not? Do we not schedule him for next week? What the what? What? Coming soon. Steve Harvey. That's not true. So uh, check out the description of this video for stuff. There's everything. Phone numbers. Yep websites follow us on instagram facebook join our patreon next week next we're we're in vegas baby we are in vegas next week so by the time they see this no no but we're gonna be getting ready we're gonna be getting ready when you see this i'm gonna be shitting my pants out of anxiety about vegas yeah i'm not looking forward to that part yeah i'm not gonna Shit in your pants. It's going to be my own pants. So I don't think that's fair. You have to worry about it. Yeah, but then if I'm with you, then people are going to be like, "Yo, why are you hanging out with this smelly girl?" Yeah, that's she smells true. like poop. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wow, this was good. Thank you for uh, opening up and being honest. I appreciate that. Wow, thank you for thanking me. Yeah, I'm and terrified. You should be. We love you guys. Join us next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. There it is. There's the awkward. Help.